Welcome to episode 326 of In Touch with iOS, the show that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsberg, and I have Jill McKinley back on the show. How are you doing, Jill? I'm doing great. Just great to see you all. Yeah, great to see you as well. So glad you're here. And Ben Rainthick's back. How are you doing, Ben? I am fantastic. Good. Glad to hear that. And also here, Jeff Gamet. So great to have you. Where how have you been and how's it going? You know, it, it's going fine. But as of now, I think it's going fantastic because look at the awesome people I get to hang out with. I know, I know. And as always, every week, it seems like there's, I don't think there's going to be much to talk about. There's plenty to talk about this week. We're going to hit beta. Some activities have been going on that and some updates that have been going on with iOS as well as uh, uh, we'll be hitting on a couple other topics and checking things out. So, but let's just uh, jump right in and uh, let's see what's going on out there. We'll start off with in touch with Vision Pro this week. Unfortunately, Marty isn't here this week. We're, we're hey Marty, so uh, we wish you were here. I know he had to travel this week, so so I'm going to kind of uh, go over some of the things that were announced this week with Vision Pro. Vision Pro 2.0.1 was a fix was released, and this is fixing this a, a Safari YouTube fix. It was just a very minor update of Vision Pro 2 that came out in September, a month ago as we record. And only three weeks late, three weeks after that. So so it can be downloaded on all Vision Pro headsets. I just installed it. But actually, you know, I'm running beta, so I didn't install it. So it, it just has some important bug fixes. And the big thing was uh, YouTube video player in Safari may freeze. So far, I haven't seen that. But uh uh, you also had some messages may unexpectedly quit when you are replying to a message with a shared Apple watch face. So it, it's out there. If you're not running beta, make sure you you go and run out, you go run the, go install this update. So it's, it's pretty important. It's got some good fixes uh, this week. And speaking of beta, they did see the third, for the third beta for Vision, Vision OS 2.1. Not much to know of really what was included in this in 2.1, but there are features that Apple has not yet released, such as the option to use a larger ultra-wide screen for your Mac user visual, uh, virtual display, as well as doing supporting multi-view in the MLB and MLS games. So if you're in beta, running beta like I am, you know, go check it out. I, I, I decided to live on the edge in, on, on Vision Pro only because it's not, it's not a really that much of a life-threatening device if I don't have it working properly. I can always revert back to it. It's not like your iPhone where it is mission critical. Vision Pro, eh, not as mission critical. But although I did install beta on on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, which I, I know that it's unheard of that I did that, but I just it was growing very tired of this all these bugs that are in 18.0, so, which we'll talk about now in just a second. But uh, yeah, I I did decide to do that. We'll talk a little more about that in just a second here. And last story I want to talk about here. This was an app that was on, and I just discovered it not too long ago. And I wish Marty was here to tell us a little bit about it. But this was an app called Juno. And this was an app that was designed for watching YouTube on the Vision Pro, which you could not do. You had to go to Safari in order to be able to watch YouTube videos. Well, it's been removed from the App Store. And the developer said that back in April, YouTube emailed him and saying that that Juno was violating YouTube's uh, terms of service and YouTube's API by modifying the native YouTube.com web, web user interface and using their trademarks and iconography. 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 <laughs> that, that, iconography. Yeah, there I got. Thank you. That, that's it. <laughs> that can be confusing to customers. So he, he, he did switch from using the embedded player to the website player, it made it clear that Juno was an unofficial viewer and explained that YouTube that as a web viewer, Juno was not using their APIs, but they chose not to, but they kept uh, pushing in it. So he just, it was removed in response of YouTube's complaint. So what a surprise, you know, it, when you, yeah, yeah, you, you don't, you don't have something on there and then come on, come on, YouTube people, you should just create a native app and be done with it. I mean, come on. I mean, I don't know what you're waiting for. I mean, well, it's, what they're waiting for is vision OS to die. That's what they want. That's no, right. It's, it's not going to happen, I don't think. So so that is the news of this week with Vision Pro. Let's go on and beta, talk about beta this week. Well, iOS 18.1 uh, 
Beta 3 is still out there. That that has not been any any updates uh, as uh, so far. How's how's been your your experience, uh, Ben, with the 18.1 Beta 3 on your iPhone? It's been fine. It's one of the few betas in the cycle that actually works. That's good because I agree because it is it has been working you know pretty well for me. So I haven't I haven't haven't spent a lot of time on AI. I'm going to ask you. Uh, a little bit if you've had to when we get to that AI discussion here in a minute. So then watch OS 11.1 third beta was released, but then it turns around and got pulled uh, because there were issues. So uh, just yesterday, as we record this, uh, users were complaining that the update caused Apple watch to freeze or lock up until they restarted the device. And this is the third software version of that that's Apple's pulled over the past month. They did pull iPad OS 18 for the iPad Pro M4 chip models, as well as HomePod 18.1 beta 2 after the beta caused some HomePod speakers to stop working. Ooh, whoops. So it's been kind of interesting. I've seen you know, this many beta versions pulled. The But then they did release a new version of the HomePod software 18.1 in public, in, the, in, in public betas for TV OS, as well as HomePod. And it's minor in scale. Not much to really talk about what TV OS has. Um, but, uh, I would venture to say just some updates, uh, which I actually, I am running beta on my, one of my Apple TVs here and it seemed kind of sluggish. So I, I've been, I just started using it yesterday when that came out and it seemed to have proved its performance. So something to, 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 to of note when it comes to those betas and Jill, are you running beta on your iPhone right now? Or are you, did oh, you, are you I being am- smart? Drinking from the fire hose right now and everything <laughs> on beta, except for my All MacBook, right. but I'm now thinking I should just turn it off for, for a little bit now because yeah. I am. <laughs> yeah. But I haven't had really any problems with anything yet, so, except okay. my car. Good. My car is now a little bit like, oh, we don't support this, we don't support this, and then it kicks in and it works. So, I don't know. But that's the only beta okay. thing I've noticed, yeah. So, as I just mentioned iPad OS 18.0.1 is now available. That was released today as we record this. It brings an update to the iPad OS 18 for the M4 iPad Pro models. And for the first time since iPad OS 18 was pulled for those devices, and it was released that there's a small number of M4 iPads that were bricked. Scary. Well, I did, I was able to install it and didn't have a problem, but then I decided to go on to beta anyway. So I'm, I'm all in on beta this week, I tell you. You got the, the edge. I really am. So I have it on my iPad as well. But very, you now can download iPad OS 18.0.1 and you can get on 18 for the first time of those that you, that, had, that was held back. And they said it was just a, a couple of users and they're not really giving in some specifics. What are some of the updates, uh, including messages may unexpectedly quick when replying to a message with a shared Apple Watch face? Performance may be impacted due to an issue of memory allocation. So, but go out there, get that. It's important. And then iOS 18.0.1 has also been released. And it's uh, very important to see, to check that, check that out and install it. It'll have some fixes here, including the, the, the freezing screen. And that was the biggest bug is the touchscreen was temporarily un- unresponsive. I did experience that many times. The camera was freezing. I've had that happen too. And the messages that like I just mentioned having an issue with that as well, and some performance. And it's like, come on, guys, this is a this is an iPhone 16 Pro Max, got the latest and greatest here. Why is this happening? So, they do, for those of you not on beta, did you did you update? I think it's just you, Jeff. I've updated my iPhone, and my Apple Watch is updating right now, and that's all I've had time for. Okay. And it's been a busy day. Yeah, me too. Yep, it's been crazy. So, and I also mentioned that um, Mac OS Sequoia, I'm sorry, also known as Tall Trees. Oh, yeah, uh, I know was, that one. Yep. Or, yeah. Or Mac uh, OS that, Tree Country. Tree Country, you could call it. Just, you know, just, just bring, bring, bring the uh, to be similarity to wine, wine country. country. But, they're, yeah. but they're close enough, in, um, <laughs> and they sound close enough together that Apple would absolutely do that. I work for Tree Company, or Tree Country. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, check that out too for for Mac OS Sequoia that it's that's been released. That there were some bug fixes on there as well. I have not updated that yet. I did. I got in, got in late, so I'll definitely do that after the show uh, tonight. We're 
Not, didn't want to take any chances. Yeah, I got the show going on here. So, but all my other machines I'll be hitting and getting those done too. So the, the other thing that, that we talked about, we did talk about Apple watch, but like I said, they did pull it cause there was been some bugs cause it uh, 11.0.1 was fixing the battery drain and touchscreen issues. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm confusing it with the beta. The, they pulled the, the beta out, out there. 11.0.1 is out there and released. And uh, that came out in September, only three weeks after it released 11.0. And it says uh, it introduces bug pick, it, it uh, introduces bug fixes for the Apple Watch, fixes an issue that, that could cause the music app to crash. Plus, it addresses a bug that could cause the battery to drain faster than expected. There's also a fix for a bug that causes the touchscreen to be unresponsive. I, did, did, did any of you guys, again, you guys are on beta, but any, I, I don't put a beta on my watch. That's one thing I didn't do. Uh, so did you experience any, were you experiencing any touch issues or, or unresponsiveness, battery drain? On your, I Jeff? don't think I was experiencing touch issues, but oftentimes when I have touch problems, I assume it's me. Yeah. But I think I was having a battery problem though, because... When I would put my watch on charger in the evening, the battery mm-hmm. level was significantly lower than I was expecting. Okay. Well, let's so go out there and get that update. That's important. Mm-hmm. All these updates are important as far as the, the dot dot one the dot zero one zero dot one update because they're fi- they're bug fixes. Important to do. Don't don't even uh, hesitate to grab that. You don't want to be on buggy buggy software. I know Apple. You shouldn't be doing this. We're te- we're beta testing for you. And this is not a beta device. This is not a beta release. So come on. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, iPhone 16. A couple of things I have here, some good topics. So one of it, one of them is, is here's what you need to know about iPhone 16's fast charging versus MagSafe or USB. Now we now know Apple doesn't include these power adapters with iPhones anymore, but you know, all us these days, a lot of us have a lot of adapters, but the, the unfortunate part is we, a lot of us probably have a, a drawer full of the old five watt small little cube uh, brick that is pretty much useless at this point. It, it it'll take mm-hmm. absolutely forever to charge these newer iPhones. So so as we know, all the iPhone 16 models can go can charge with USB C from zero to fifty percent. It takes it about thirty minutes approximately, and you need to have it the, at least the twenty watt adapter or, or better for fast charging. If you already had an iPhone that could charge fast. You probably have the hardware you need, I'm sure. So uh, iPhones do charge f- fastest when the battery is low and the char- and then charge charging slows down. So you'll see most rapid charging usually at lower battery levels. So to be aware of that too. There was some speculation that the six, uh, iPhone 60 models were going to support the 45 watts charging, but tests were proven that that was inaccurate. The charging max is out at 30 watts, and that's what's similar to what last year's 15 iPhone 15 charging was as well. So be aware that that's what what you're going to have. But you know, the next thing you need to know about is MagSafe. You know, the, I've been using MagSafe all the time now. I don't I don't use a USB C connector plug. I just use I have a MagSafe adapter on my bedside, bedside and it's it's also a great way to uh, charge things, and it, it charges a lot faster. Uh, Apple, Apple now has a, a 30 watt adapter that's, that's now selling for $39. So it's a little higher than it was before. It's one of the newer ones, as well as uh, you can get them in two different sizes, one meter and two meter of, uh, uh of charging. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really a great thing to, to have to having using one of these chargers. You guys use a uh, MagSafe charging? Well, yes, I use Qi too. Okay. And I have a variety of them between car and some fast, some slow. <laughs> You're right. We have a whole mishmash of everything. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Yeah. I use MagSafe and everything else. <laughs> yeah. So Ben, explain Chi Chart to Chi 2 a little real briefly for me, if you could, please. To put it succinctly, it's basically, well, it, iPhone MagSafe for the rest of us. <laughs> basically, they turned MagSafe 1 into or iphone magsafe one into basically a a universal standard yeah that that about sums it up so good so it's you want to you want fast charging you're gonna you're gonna definitely want to do things like 
use the USB, USB C cables that are 20 watts or better, the MagSafe 30 watts or better. But there's a bonus. You can transfer files from the iPhone 16 Pro to another device very quickly. If you want to go pick up one of those USB 3 cables, that is a 10 gigabyte transfer speeds. So you're going to have these drives and be able to improve that as well. So, so far. Jill, you stay, are you with which phone, iPhone do you have? You still have the, you have a 14, 15? Yeah, I have a 14. I'm That's thinking. Fine. I want to see how AI turns out, but yeah. So I have some fast chargers for it, but not the new ones. Yeah. Yeah, because I think the 14 was still on Lightning, wasn't it? Yep, Lightning, yeah. Yeah, so so some good information as far as that goes. So let's uh, well, on, uh, let's, uh, let's move on here. Everybody is, most people are aware of the great camera app called Halide. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, mm-hmm. they went and d- dug deep into the iPhone 16 Pro camera. You know, all these, all the developers tend to find and go, want to do an in-depth look at new, and, and, and Halide is no different. They want to look at the new te- camera technology that Apple had introduced. So they, uh, the developer took over a th- thousand pictures with the iPhone 16 Pro to examine the changes, changes in the camera setup, Apple's imaging processing and more. Now with the upgraded 48 megapixel ultra wide camera, the iPhone 16 Pro found that the, the photos have impressive sharpness, but Apple did not add a larger sensor, which is still going to not be the full level of detail that you'd want in a wide camera, but it has a much better sensor. For macro photos, the 48 megapixel camera does wonders for up close shots. I have not tried a lot of that yet. And all this stuff, uh, all this, this stuff goes. And uh, as for the main camera, which Apple now calls a fusion camera, which I was stumped at our the, the Mac user group on Saturday, even yeah. remembering what that was. And Jeff was kind enough to remember that. And he had my back on that one. Uh, it's using the sensor that had the same physical size of this 15 Pro sensor, but both 16 and 16 Pro have a fusion camera, whereas the 16 Pro had a larger and higher quality sensor. So this, uh, the 15 Pro and the 16 Pro combines pixels that can produce a better 24 megapixel and 12 megapixel image in addition to that 48 megapixel photos. So, yeah, I'm I, I'm I'm seeing some cool things with the camera. I haven't, I guess, I haven't had a ton of time to work on it. I really want to spend some time on it because it, they really made some vast improvements. I know you like how I, I think most of you here, if not all of you, like how I. What, what do you think on this, Jeff? I, you know, I love when how I does these these deep dives into Apple's cameras because they're they're in the right place to be able to intelligently evaluate these cameras for us. So when they when when they say, "Hey, you know, you're getting significantly better close-up shots," that means you really are getting significantly better close-up shots. So, yeah, for for me, this validates what I experienced briefly when I was playing with the uh, iPhone 16 Pro in store, yeah. which is that uh, that. This is a a really nice upgrade for the cameras. Yeah. You got any thoughts on this, Joel? I'm excited about the cameras. I mean, if I upgrade, it's primarily cameras. And I've lo- loved that yeah. app for years because I'm an old school film. I developed my yeah. own film. I love the control. But I am excited about the photograph button, too, because my friend is always kind of fumbling around yep. looking for the button to take a picture. And I think it's going to solve yeah, all camera control problems. button. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited about it. Yeah. How about you, Ben? Well. I mean, honestly, with the Lux apps like Halide, and I'm completely va- blanking on the video app right now. Yeah. Yeah. For most cases, you would need a light DSLR or mirrorless camera. Your iPhone can do most of those cases now. Yep. All right. So let's talk a little bit about battery uh, battery capacities on the iPhone 16. This was revealed a couple of weeks ago, but I wanted to talk a little bit about this as far as the, the increases in battery capacity compared to the, from the 15 to the 16. So on average, the, the six, the 16 went up 6.3%. The 16 plus went up about 6.6%. The pro, the 16 pro is now up to 9.4% higher. And then the 16 pro max was at 6%. So battery capacity is the, increased the most with the 16 Pro, which was uh, like a 6% increase uh, uh, over other models. With the A918 and, A8 and A18 Pro chips, the thermal improvements are big a big factor with that. So 
some some good benefits for sure. And they rated, I'm not going to read all through all these, uh, but 16 Pro Max can get 33 hours of video playback and 29 hours of streaming video and 105 hours of audio. So that's, that's impressive. Uh, some pretty big numbers. And then all the numbers with all their models are much less. So their alone, their alone uh, adds the, the value of the 16 Pro Max if you were to do, if you did uh, do that all the time. So so even the 15 and the 15 Pro is still a good decent iPhone. I mean, if those of you have the 15 15 Pro, you still got a great iPhone well from year for years to come. So and that's what's great about iPhones. Yeah, you can hold on to your phones for five six years and still get all the latest updates. I mean, it may not perform as what the newer models do after time, but I mean, that's the good thing about iPhone because you can keep, hold on to your device for a fair amount of time. Like, Jeff, you still have the 12, right? And uh, I, Yep, I still have the 12 Pro. My, and, uh, my family member is going to be upgrading and taking my 15 Pro Max here. So she's going to be having it going from the 12. So, so, so uh, yeah, it's uh, that's what's great about iPhone is just being able to have a device you can, if you don't want to upgrade, don't, you're not crazy like me. I upgrade every year. I, I take one for the team because I have to talk about this uh, this device every year, and why not? <laughs> and I so. drool with jealousy over you. <laughs> I just yeah, drool. So. I can't help it. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. So uh, another thing that the iPhone 16 has added is the uh, being able to edit spatial audio in videos with audio mix. So when you shoot video on 16 models, uh, multiple formats like spatial audio and stereo are recorded to allow more audio customization. So if you record videos with a with the spatial audio turned on, you can go back later and and you know edit the video sound to reduce background noise, to focus people speaking on camera. So you've you've got all kinds of different mixes here. There's the four mixes that are available on the and what it does is it uses machine learning to identify and separate the background audio. So you have standard, which plays the original. And the audio you recorded, you have in frame, which reduces sounds and voices from sources not visible in the video frame. Studio, which reduces background sounds and reverb to make the sound more like you're recording in a professional studio. And then cinematic uh, puts all the voices on the front facing track and leaving the environmental noises in the surround. So you've got some really awesome abilities to being able to edit all this stuff. And it's really easy to, to, to do it. And I believe that this, this, yeah, this this of course is on the 16, so that's what makes it a little tougher. But I've not played with this much yet. But I think this is another thing to be to be notable that this is a pretty amazing. More and more becoming a pot, as we call it every time is this is a computer in your pocket mm-hmm. that you've got these amazing tools for editing. What are your thoughts on this, Jeff? Yeah, this this is a computer in your pocket. And Apple's made it clear through design changes with the 15 and 16. This is not a phone first, and that's that that's okay, because that's not how most people use their phone or their iPhones anymore. But uh, not being able to do the the editing for spatial audio correctly on an iPhone to me seemed really weird. So I'm mm-hmm. glad that that we have those features now because you're going to be taking these or making these videos on your iPhone. You should be able to do some editing for them there as well. Yeah. Ben, <laughs> that was what you were doing there. <laughs> uh, sorry. I dealing with a little oh, the cat. Yes. So look, you have a phone that is now basically as powerful as an M1 MacBook Pro. Yep. Yeah, you should be able to edit audio and video on it like that. Yeah. For sure. How about you, Joe? Well, I was first thinking, this is an audiophile thing. Jeff will love this. This is more of a Jeff thing than a me thing because I'm not that much of an audiophile. And when I read the article that you included in the notes, I was like, I want this. (laughs) This is amazing. Of course you do. Yeah. Yeah. I do nature. I do a lot of nature photography and videos, and I thought, oh, this yeah. will be nice. Yeah, b- being be- able to do some really cool nature spatial videos and photos, that's super cool. Yeah. Yep. Got some people in the chat here at youtube.com slash in touch with iOS, and we got uh, Jill's brother, Win- Witherbucket, talking about the, his new iPhone. He went with the 16, <laughs> which is great to hear. Nice. He, he got a deal through T-Mobile. 
I was, in a, and that was that's great. And he said that it's uh, it's very good, especially with zooming macro. But I need to find the setting to stop it from re- revert, reverting to four by three mate ratio every time. So that's understandable. And and of course, that sounds like a bug. Yeah, it could be a bug. I'm gonna to to check that. And of course, we have Guy Cyril, also known as Vert Shark, in the chat saying, "Microphones are life. Audio nerds forever." <laughs> so, <laughs> this checks out. Yeah, that leave that from Guy. Yeah, good to see everybody here in the chat here. So, let's uh, go ahead and move on to our next topic. That's uh, this was uh, we kind of talked about this late at last week's show, but I wanted to make sure I hit on this is. Uh, Avoid vehicle motion sickness with this new iOS 18 feature. In iOS 18, Apple added several new accessibility features, and one feature in particular is likely to have some widespread appeal among car passengers is vehicle motion cues, which aims to prevent motion sickness when looking at an iPhone or iPad. Hmm. And according to, to Apple, the research showed that motion, sick, motion sickness is commonly caused by a sensory conflict between what the person sees and what they feel, which can be prevented, pre- prevent some users from comfortably using their iPhone or iPad while riding in a moving vehicle. Of course, you're, you're the passenger when you're doing this, right? <laughs> and so. The, the vehicle motion uh, cues are designed to avoid that sense, this sensory conflict with the use of visual elements on the display that includes real-time charges of motion. And Apple, Apple explained this is vehicle motion cues animated dots on the edges of the screen represent changes in vehicle motion to help you reduce sensory conflict without Interfering with the main content, user sensors built into the iPhone and the iPad. Vehicle motion cues recognize when a user is moving in a vehicle and responds accordingly. The feature can be turned on and off in the control center. And the way you do that is you go into the settings under accessibility, then tap motion, and then you go in to show vehicle motion cues and then turn that on. And then you can have it on or automatic or on. Mm -hmm. So this is a Pretty cool thing. And you actually can put this in the control center too. So if you, uh, we talked about that last week, all, all these great buttons that are available to be added into the control center, that might be something you might want to toggle on and off. Cause if you travel in a car and you're using it while you're a passenger, uh, not bad, not a bad idea. So, and this, I think is a, is available. Oh, yeah. This is on the 16. I think is, is what it has. I don't think it's available on other phones, iPhones. Uh, it's definitely or is it just, or is it, is it on the 15? Okay. So it must be, most iPhones can do this because it's sensory. Or at least the 15 you, Pro Max. Yeah. Well, I can try it too for the moment. So uh, what do you think on this, Joe? I tried playing with it. I, I, I saw the settings when I upgraded. And mm-hmm. my friend gets car sick when I drive, which is a me thing. And so I don't <laughs> this problem. She stops yelling at me. Yeah. How about you, Joe? I, I, I like that Apple is taking into account that users are humans and they are tailoring features for the actual device users. And it goes beyond the the motion sickness thing. It's other accessibility issues. It's the health and fitness things that, uh, that they've added. I said accessibility issues. That's not how I meant to say it. Accessibility features. There we go. And, and same thing for health and fitness. So good on Apple for doing that. Yeah. And you, Ben? Look, I'm one of those people who has pretty much kept uh, reduced motion on from the beginning because, well, as is, iOS will make me sick. Anything Apple does to help those of us who do have motion sickness is definitely good on me. And, well, I just turned on automatic so nice yeah good deal so let's move on next topic here i want to talk about there's a, a number of features that i we may have all missed and I, i'm starting to notice this too again i haven't you know we're, we're so busy i don't even have time to want to spend but i see starting seeing all these weird things that are happening like when, I, when you when i moved and looked at my watch i got the, the the border telling me that i've looked at it and so but they uh, did add a lot of these new features in Apple Watch, and there's about 25 of them here. I'm we'll, we'll kind of go through a few of these. Number one was the digital crown for notifications. Previously, in, in WatchOS 10, you had to swipe down on your Apple Watch face to get to the notifications, and now what they've done is real well. Now all you have to do is uh, turn the digital crown downwards to reveal them and scroll accordingly. I think that was a good move because it was such a pain. You have to 
tap the, the, the crown and then go to the, you know, go to that or, and get to the, that menu. Of course, they, they've added check-in. I don't, I don't, you guys, you guys use check-in at all with friends. I haven't done that too often. I do. No. Um, and, uh, so putting it on the watch, I haven't played with it on the watch yet. Um, yeah, me either. So I need to do that. The, uh, on the phone, it's been a pain in the butt to use at times because yeah. if the location that that check-in thinks you're going to go to is not where you're actually going, then it's it's an it's a not obvious process to change the location for check-in. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how that works on the watch. I guess I'll have to yeah. have to go over to a friend's house and and then go somewhere else and use check-in. Yeah. So a couple of a number of things again. I'm not going to go through all these. This was this one's I like is the action button quick menu. In settings, you can assign various functions to the action button. But in Watch OS 11, you can also do this just by long pressing the action button. This will bring up the menu includes so workout, stopwatch, waypoint, backtrack, dive, flashlight, shortcuts, voice menu, memo, a number of other things. Being able to assign that there. So that's a nice little feature it's added. As well as music recognition, it's got uh, Shazam now is c- coming pre installed in Watch OS 11 under the moniker Music Recognition. So you can easily go and identify songs using your watch. They did add the Tides app that, which, that checks the conditions of over 115,000 beaches all over the world for the next seven days. It's kind of cool. You can exit sleep mode faster uh, by because you know, I always have my watch on, on my nightstand and it's, it's charging sideways. So I've got the nightstand mode. Uh, you have to long press, long press the digital crown for about three seconds to exit the sleep mode. This, this delay felt like an age in the middle of the night, <laughs> but watch OS 11, you don't even need to, to do is press the digital crown and on the regular watch face and it'll, it'll, it'll just, it'll just, it'll just, just disable immediately here. So, so pinning app, I like this pinning timers. You actually can now pin the timers that you use regularly at the top of the app interface. Uh, some, some scroll down to the bottom of the timers and then uh, tap edit, and then you can tap the pin icon on any time timer to pin to that top. So I think that's I need a, to do this. Yeah, yes. I need to, I do too. I and there's some to new double tax. Yeah. Uh, there's some new double tap uh, actions um, that they've added the uh, double tap feature, which I never can, I got to see why it's not working. And I'm, I'm doing it right now as you see me on camera and it's not coming up. It, it's like hit or miss here. You used to be able to scroll through and navigate content in any Apple app, including weather messages. You can now even use double tap to dismiss a timer that ended. Uh, Apple has also op- opened up double tap to developers with a new new API. So you can expect some third party stuff added to this too, which is kind of cool. So, and then they did add the vitals and tracking options in the vitals app. And so you can do things like health data, like uh, oxygen levels when it's available, the wrist temperature, rep. Rep, uh, re- respiratory rate, heart rate, and it's all in one Apple in one app here. So, so they did recustomize the the play view, which I that's kind of threw me off because you're so used to when you're playing something and all of a sudden shows on your watch and oh wait that's supposed to have a full screen oh no it doesn't have that anymore so it just kind of shows as a small little now playing view here uh, now you, and you also can play audio through your Apple uh, Watch speaker uh, if you have a Series Ten or an Apple Watch Ultra Two you can do that. So, and you can change alert tones. So you can, have, and there was live activities in the smart stack. So if you can, any activities that you're having going on. So there's a lot of uh, new features that they've added in the Apple Watch. It's just people aren't aren't aware of it. So yeah, just check the show notes with this article that we talked about here. But I think there's some great stuff. Was any of the stuff that you guys didn't know about, Jill? A lot of it, well, actually. Yeah. yeah. I've been doing a deep dive into this because I went camping last week and I was places yeah. without internet. And so I downloaded all my maps to my watch and went on these hiking trips and I got a chance to do that. The other funny thing is I was walking around my campsite without a flashlight and like, oh, no, I can't see anything. Wait, I got a giant flashlight on my wrist. (laughs) So I got to test a lot of these functionalities and I'm really enjoying what's coming in 18 on the watches. Anything else you guys want to add on this? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) That's waiting for you, Jeff. (laughs) Well, I, I was trying to formulate how I wanted to say this and and I figured it out. I wish Apple did more to make it easier for the average person 
to find and experiment with all of these new features. Mm-hmm. I I have a feeling that a lot of new features don't get used very much because because most users have no idea that they exist. Yeah. The biggest yep. thing I do is go to YouTube and I say what's new in 18.0 watch and you find a ton of oh, videos right. of people who did the deep dives and show you. So, but you're right, it is not well documented. Yeah. Well, I mean, pretty much the in the keynote is hi, Apple Watch still exists. Bye. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> what way to sum it up <laughs> all right so check that out you get get you know, up, up to up to speed on all the new stuff that's on watch os 11 interesting despite some new ceramic shields the iphone 16 miles still are a little bit vulnerable to drops they do have this a second generation of ceramic shield material that's apple says it's even tougher than prior generation ceramic uh, shield uh, device insurer provider Allstate Protection Plans today published the results of their annual drop test and give a insight into the durability of the new iPhones. They tested the iPhone 16 Pro Max, which is Apple's largest iPhone to date at 6.9 inches, of course, and it continues to have a glass front and back. And though Apple has introduced a better ceramic shield material that's infused uh, with ceramic for durability, there's still no match for a concrete sidewalk. They used a drop bot to simulate drops from heights of six of six, six feet, and they conducted that for several tests. The front drop test, it it shattered the the screen and had some visible scuffs along the uh, titanium frame. And the drop rendered the phones use, usable unusable, though the haptic responses felt that could be repaired. And the back drop test, the rear glass shattered after just one drop, so, so, and then suffered damage to the camera housing. It remained. Functional, but including the camera, was not safe to handle. So I think all in all, with this, yeah, it's never going to be perfectly from drops. We we all drop drop our phone, and it's good to have cases on and a good good. Some people like to have screen protectors. I I've lived on the edge, and our friend Chuck Joiner always promotes and says he wants he puts a screen protector on all he wanted, all of, all of his iPhones. But I, I've gone without them for years and haven't had a problem. So, what do you think about this, Jeff? You know, you can't beat physics. Nope, you can't. And yeah, it's it, it sucks that 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 it is in the grand scheme of things easy to to break the glass on the front and back of an iPhone. That said, any other iPhone or smartphone with the with its glass front, it's going to break fairly easily as well. And I will say the number of people that I encounter using smartphones with a with a cracked screen. <laughs> the I got halfway through that sentence and then and then it was going the wrong direction. <laughs> Android users, more of them that that I encounter have cracked screens than iPhone users. Yeah. And it looks like Chuck Joyner is in the chat with us tonight. Hi, Chuck. How are you doing? And we just said that we we applaud you for putting uh, screen protectors on your phones, but I don't do it. Call Chuck's name when he appears. Yeah, that happened. Other summoning. But we, we said his fo- name three times. Yeah. <laughs> and he appeared. <laughs> Last thoughts on this for, from Ben. What do you think? Honestly, no matter what they call it, relatively thin glass is relatively thin glass. Yes. It's... You know, it might be harder, it might be stronger, it might be better engineered, but the gene- but the molecular properties of glass are going to be what they are. It's a crystalline structure. I would agree with that. So, uh, just be careful with your iPhone, that's all I got to say. There's a number of times I've dropped my phone, but luckily it's been on like a floor. And not on, if the concrete is going to be your, is going to be the kiss of death, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, concrete uh, poisoning this. is so, horrible for phones. So MacBooks don't fare that well either. <laughs> no. Yeah. Sudden deceleration shock syndrome. It's a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. For sure here. So one more. Uh, so one thing I'm, I'm going to jump on here is a couple uh, tips on iOS 18. I talked about this uh, and it does. Uh, iOS 17 never offered a system level method for individually locking sensitive apps like photos behind Face ID. There's a shortcut action that provides rudimentary protection, but it's not infallible. It's not infallible. 
Thankfully, iOS 18, they have a new place to do this, lock and hide iPhone apps. It's very useful because you can unlock the, your phone and hand it to somebody, and then if they want to look something, but the, the knowing that they won't be able to open the apps you have locked. And good, a, good, good, uh, a good example would be if you don't want people to be opening up your bank app, <laughs> and hopefully you have a, you know, multi-factor authentication turned on and, mm -hmm. and your face ID, regardless if you open the app or not. But it is worth noting that not all apps can be locked. Apple does not provide locking options for like maps, clock, calculator settings. I mean, why would you want to lock those? <laughs> uh, well, maybe I settings. Can tell I don't you know why you want to lock settings. Settings. I was saying maybe settings. I, I, yeah. I just said that. Go ahead. What do you think? Yeah, because if if your phone's unlocked, like let let's say you're at the coffee shop, you've unlocked your phone, done something, you set it down, and you get distracted, and someone picks up your phone, you don't want them going in your settings. And messing around with stuff in there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I I would love to be able to to lock down settings just like I can lock down my banking apps. Mm -hmm. Yep. I so just had a good thought. Maybe yeah, a lock of your whole phone. Like someone says, can I borrow your phone? I have to call my mom. It'd be nice no. if there was a button that says lock everything except <laughs> this phone so you can. And then, and then they dial a toll number that... Right. Uh, that charges right. you five hundred dollars. Oh boy! Right. I know. I yeah. just ruined it for you. It's you so did. hard to be a good Samaritan. Try to be a nice person. Yeah. So then you also have the option of how to lock and hide apps. And I found out the hard way that you can't just lock. You can't. You can. You can hide an app, but you have to have Face ID enabled, of course. If you're just using a pin code, I don't think you can do it. But you. But third-party apps are using this above method. You can also have the option to hide it as well. Again, we talked about system apps like Safari and Photos. You can't do that. And then the app icon is name is removed. It's removed from the home screen, and but it, it'll it'll show in the app library. So if you scroll over to the app library, there's going to be a little blank uh, blank section there with all these apps, and you you'll, you'll see the icon in there. But you could tap it, and then the only way you can get to it, actually, you, you tap it, and then you, the only way you can get to it is by uh, tapping it to open it, and then the face ID will open it after that. So we're adding some extra added uh, protection. And you have that option where it says hide and request ID. And it's going to have a, an obscure app icon and name, so you won't be able to see it, and no apps or notifications or calls. When you, For in this case, it was showing a, an example of the app things. Uh, it'll also restrict app notifications or, call, or calls when it's hidden. So and then to unlock and, and unhide them, all you have to do is go back into the hidden, and then you can tap it and you can remove it. So this is a this is a cool feature. I'm glad that they added something like this. Don't you guys think? Yeah. Mm hmm. I wish it would have happened sooner. Yeah, I agree. I have one app I want to talk about. A lot of a lot of people were talking about this week. This was uh, Jason Snell from Six Colors, as well as Dan Morin. We're also talking about it. This was an app called Croissants, and it simplifies this cro uh, social media cross posting on iOS. You know, it's and that's always been a rare th a debacle. Always so trying to do this, these things, and very cool the fact that this developer has come up with a way to simplify the process of multiple social media sites. You know, and you know, and you know that it's uh, in the wake of uh, Twitter's exification. Many of us are dealing with a splintered social media landscape. So we, and we're all, most of us are on, on Mastodon and Threads and Blue, Blue, Blue Sky, and there's so many. So for now, they've got this where you actually can go in and do posting on all three of those, as I just mentioned, Mastodon and Threads and Blue Sky, and there's going to be more coming. So, but you can do it right from an mm -hmm. app, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. And this is, this, this is a really cool app. It is free. You can only post to one social media site uh, while it's free. But yeah, why not support the developer? In fact, he's offering a fifty nine ninety nine forever license for it. So oh, nice. And I would hope he's going to be able to add like other social media sites like Facebook and who knows if they'll, if they'll be able to get X because you know how they are how they did the APIs. So, but you know, of all the primary social medias, right? Instagram will probably be added at some point. So it's a nice little app, and I, I recommend checking it out here. The links in our show notes in this with this article as well. So, all right, let's move on to the news for this week. This was big news this week, and I didn't, I didn't really get a lot of attention, but a fair amount. 
Massimo CEO resigns, raising speculation that Blood Auction could return to the Apple Watch. If you remember, if you remember, that was the big lawsuit against Apple. Was the Mass- Massimo had the patent on the oxygen sensor, and they have now shut it off for all future uh, later I- Apple watches and all future ones. So right now, if you buy uh, Apple Watch Ten, you will not get it in the U.S. So, so it's. And there was some extra analysis about it, but the series of steps that could lead to this, lead to this, that, that, that he lost the, as the founder, that he lost the board chair and completely lost control. But it involves unhappy shareholders in freezing out a board you disagree with. That, that'll do it. Do it. But like we said, hanging it in the air is a question. Will Massimo's board now be more willing to cut a deal with Apple to end this dispute? Because I think it's a, it's it's in best interest for both companies. Honestly, I mean, Apple wants it back, but obviously they were they gave in and said, okay, we'll 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 hide it. The good thing is they just all they did was they disabled it, so it is still available on the device. Because in in the EU, you can still can you can still get it. So if you buy mm-hmm. an Apple Watch in the EU, it has it enabled. That's why I was hesitant to upgrade. I, I kept my Apple Watch Series Nine because it does have it. I got it right. At when the watch first came out and then shortly thereafter, then any of the newer, newer stock, it was disabled. So Jeff, I'm going to start with you. Where, what do you think about this whole uh, resignation? Uh, there's something's fishy with this company now. Well, I'm, I don't have any inside information, so I can only speculate, but uh, my speculation is that, that he was ultimately given an ultimatum. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so he chose to resign. And I have a feeling a big part of that was his his hard refusal to negotiate with companies, including Apple, maybe especially Apple, I don't know, about about licensing. And I have a feeling that that the board and shareholders, the rest of the company, they wanted to make something happen. And this is the first step towards that. Yep. How about you, Ben? Look, from everything I heard, this guy made the, made the company public, but still wanted to run it like it was his own personal fiefdom. Mm-hmm. Shareholders got happy, got unhappy. They essentially staged a coup. You know. The, from what I understand, he was pretty, he wanted things a certain, he wanted things a certain way. Yeah, maybe uh, he know, should he, have uh, not taken the company public then, just saying. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Right. And I mean, whether Apple, the the idea of revenue from Apple played a part into that is unknown. But end of the day, the people who actually owned the company weren't interested in the, where he wanted to take it as far as revenue go. And, and you know, he's gone. How about you, Jeff? Jill, the final word on this? Yeah, I like the blood oxygen. I have asthma, so I'm always watching that kind of thing. But interestingly, sure. it also got disabled on the Ultra Watch 1. Yeah, and I thought maybe it'd be older; it would survive until yeah. something else happened. Strange. But it it didn't as well. So I'm hoping they come up with a deal now and we get it back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Th- th- that would be very preferable. Yeah. All right, a couple more stories before we wrap up this week. Apple Podcasts apps rolling out transcriptions in these eight additional languages. I was starting this week. They are adding Brazil, Brazilian, Portuguese, Danish, Dutch, Finnish, Italian, Norwegian, Portu- Portuguese, and Swedish. And there's a guide here that you can go to and explain how to use the feature in the Apple Podcast app. It's great that they added transcripts in English when we first started off. Uh, I don't use the Apple Apple Podcast app too too much. I don't know if anybody else here does, but it's not the, trans- the transcripts are nice. Mm-hmm. I've used you guys it for the transcript. It? Yeah. yeah, I use it for the transcript when I'm going, what did that person say? So I go to the Apple podcast and now I'm like, oh, yeah. that's what they meant. Okay. But no, it's great. Oh. I think it's great. Yep. Anything else you guys want to add? Yep. All right. And this is miraculous. This is like, I guess, held froze over. <laughs> Tableau now has their app on the Apple TV. <laughs> it only took two years. 
I guess we really yeah. do live in end times. I yeah. guess so. Yeah, all, all it took was me putting a silicon dust HD home run, aka their competition, oh, in no. my Amazon in my Amazon cart. Okay, <laughs> but you didn't buy it. No, I didn't buy it yet. Oh no, buy the buy the Tableau. Yeah, Tableau so uh, but, is reasonably priced. If anybody that doesn't know what Tableau is, it's a it's a TV device that was that uses an over the air antenna that will allow you to be able to get all of the over the air ch- channels. Uh, so the local channels, which is nice because uh, these days of the way streaming is going on right now and cord cutting, they're charging more and more money because they have to pay all these local stations big money for this. So this is an alternate way of doing it. Now I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, depending on where you live, you know, indoor antennas tend to work. Okay. I, and where my office is, I've, I've already tried it because I was excited because uh, uh, in Chicago sports, the Chicago sports network has just started this, this past uh, Monday here as we record and they have over the air, ch- over the air channels, which I thought was kind of crazy. You'd be able to watch the, the Blackhawks, the bulls and, and, and the white Sox uh, for free, basically, <laughs> which was, which is kind of interesting. So, but of course where the antenna is, I wasn't able to scan and get the channels. <laughs> I'm going to try to re- relocate it back in my other bedroom. Hopefully we'll get it. I would, it might be worthwhile. And I've, 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 I've followed a lot of these antenna guys that are on YouTube uh, to getting an outdoor antenna. If you really wanted to, you know, be able to capture it in, in, in our, in our air, in my area, Chicago area, the, you know, the, cha- the, the reception is pretty, pretty, really good. I mean, you're going to get digital in most cases. So, but it's a great little device. It does work. And also it includes a lot of uh, streaming t- channels that are free, like a, like the Pluto TV and a lot of those other free services have too. So they have, they add that into it as well. So you have internet, streaming channels as well as uh, over the air channels and and it does have a dvr so you can record stuff too which is really cool so any thoughts on this jeff first if if you open the link that you shared tableautv.com slash four dash apple tv and click on how it works does it want you to to log in to access beta dash us tableautv.com no oh really where's uh yeah, I get. I didn't try that. That asked me to to log in to the to their beta site. That's super funny. Anyhow, no, they, they um, must not have updated this yet because I, I I installed it on my Apple TV and it it had no problem. Uh, there was a it was in in the App Store when I downloaded. It, it wasn't beta. Yeah, yeah. So they'll need to fix that. But the yeah. fact that this is a thing, good. I'm glad it's a thing. W- will I give them high praise for doing this? No, because they no, should have done it, has been pointed out a long time ago. Yeah. But th- this is something that has made sense to exist. F- well, uh, ever since you could actually make apps for Apple TV and Tableau as a device. Yeah. Last word on this, Joe? Well, I have not heard of this before until I read your notes and saw them. Excited to check it out. We have 24 hour Xena network over the air. So I think, you know, oh, yeah, getting nice. access to this, you know, um, all but, Xena uh, all the time, all Xena all nice. the time. But anyway, I think it would be nice we to have this option. <laughs> they do. All right. Last story of the week. And I think this is kind of exciting. I hopefully it is true. Ted Lasso to return to Apple TV Plus as season four, which is allegedly confirmed. Uh, this will be the returning of the fourth season. This was actually, according to Sigmund Judge, a writer at Mac Stories and co-host of the Magic Rays of Light podcast. In a social media post today, he had confirmed that the pre-production of the smash hit Apple TV comic series will begin in January in London, England. Apple has yet to confirm the fourth season, but there's no set release date. And then, if you recall, the third season ran from March to May of 2023. And, and we know what Ted Lasso is. I'm kind of excited. I hope this happens. I really love this show. What do you guys think? I guess I better finish watching season three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get get going, yeah. <laughs> right? I like. I could go I like back and watch it again. Time. That's how much how much I love that show. So I I, I I love the show, but there's so many shows that it's easy oh, to I get know. distracted, and then and then months later you realize, oh crap, I never finished, and that's where I'm with Ted Lasso. Mm-hmm. So I better go back and finish that. Yes, be ready. All right, with that. That was a great show this week. We had so much fun talking about Apple stuff and technology, and I'm so glad everybody was here. Everybody was here in the, in the YouTube chat. Uh, we all appreciate you being here. So let's go ahead and wrap up for this week. 
Uh, that's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, suggestions to our email address, which is feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Mastodon. It's at intouchwithios at techhangout.social. Support the show by buying me a coffee at intouchwithios.com slash coffee. We would really appreciate it. You can become a patron of the show by going to patreon.com slash intouchwithios. We have two tiers available to support the show. We would really appreciate it. Make sure you like, share, subscribe so you're notified when we are live streaming, which is Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific on our YouTube channel. Cletus was there, and we saw Guy and uh, Witherspoon and a couple others in the chat. We really appreciate it. And and, and that's at youtube.com slash iOS, like I said, where you can watch the current and past live streams as well as listen to past shows. Go visit In Touch with iOS magazine on Flipboard where many of the topics we talk about and discuss are flipped into that magazine. The link is in our show notes. You can subscribe to the show in your favorite podcatcher, including Pocket Cast, Overcast, Apple Podcasts, and you got the transcripts in other languages now and many others. But better yet, go to, your, to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com where all the links to all the ways to listen to us is on that website. I am Dave Ginsburg. You can find me on Macedon at DaveG65 at Macedon.cloud. Jill McKinley, I'm so glad you made it back here this week. Where can people find you? Oh, you can find, well, now I'm up to two blogs, four podcasts, and you can find them all at a better life in small steps.com. <laughs> all right. And uh, Ben Rafik, thanks for being here as well. Where can people find you? Well, Dave, you can find me at Ben Rafik on your social media of choice. You can find my writings at Rafik Tech or RafikTech.com. I had to think about that for a second. Uh, you can also find me occasionally on such podcasts as Mac Voices Live, The Bake Show, and The Mac Show on the British Tech Network. Great. And last but certainly not least, Jeff Gamut, always a pleasure having you here. Where can people find you? Well, it's always a treat to get to be here, so thank you. Um, all right, for social media, I'm Jay Gamut everywhere. I'm active right now on Mastodon and Instagram. And then for shows, Tuesdays on Chuck Joyner's Mac Voices Live here with with you on In Touch with iOS on Thursdays on the British Tech Network, uh, the Big Show on Thursdays, the Mac Show on Fridays, then uh, uh, the Context Machine with Brian Chaffin and Patrice Brendamore and I do Retro Rewatch. All right. And thank you for listening, for watching, for supporting the show. We really appreciate it. We love doing the show every week. And uh, there will be plenty more to talk about next week. We'll just know it. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll talk again soon.